What's going on, people? Today, we're going to talk about the ghost in the machine. For the last two years, we have been living in a phantom economy. We've been living in a stimulus-based, propped-up economy. And this has created the ghost in the machine. This has created wild runs on AMC and GameStop. Game stop, stop. Game stop, stop. This has created a strange opportunity for people who are playing certain games. The ghost in the machine isn't the real economy. It's not even close to the real economy. Now, one of the things that we're having in 2022 is the return to the real economy and the return to marketplace fundamentals. This is where we're heading and the pathway doesn't look good. Shout out to all the people who are leaving the well-constructed comments. It's the 1st of March and we're about to get into some different level of training. We're about to get into some stuff. So shout out to the nerd tribe, shout out to the intellectual gangsters who watch this channel. I appreciate you guys. So as we're leaving the ghost in the machine economy, which was an apparition, which was a phantom economy, and we're moving to real marketplace fundamentals and the invasion of Russia into Ukraine has pushed a lot of real marketplace fundamentals into play. Russia is a unique situation. Russia supplies 5% of the world's oil and gas. That is not insignificant. So with these sanctions, the countries that normally would buy oil and gas from Russia will have to go shopping somewhere else. What this is going to do is raise the price of gas and oil. This is a big deal because the price of oil and gas had already gone up due to inflation. So this wartime activity and the Ukrainians are fighting back. The Ukrainians are like, we're not going down without a fight. So this is producing real marketplace economics and fundamentals returning us very quickly to the real economy and I would not be surprised to see a recession fourth quarter of this year because of this Russia invading Ukraine situation it's a big deal it's a very big deal because this is going to have ramifications literally around the world and I feel that in December, once again, Black Friday sales, lowest ever since they've been keeping the record. And then I had some people who wanted to say that retail sales were up. Um, once again, if you look at retail holiday sales, they were going up billions and billions of dollars. Um, from 2019 to 2020, we had a 30% increase in retail sales and holiday spending. And then last year we had an 11% increase. So we had 20 to 30% increases and then we only had an 11% increase. That even though it looks like it's an increase, it was actually down because it should have been a 30 something percent increase. So we're moving back to the real economy. And one of the things like the video that there's so many people find it so hard to believe that so many people don't make any significant amount of money and they don't believe that the homosexual situation is exploding the number of people who don't know each other who are living with each other the number of people who are living with someone because this person has a home the number of ch adult children living with mom and dad is the highest it's, it's been since the turn of the century when that was kind of normal. 
it was normal for an adult child to stay at home with mom and dad until they got married and then develop their own household. That was normal and we moved away from that in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. And now we have the highest number of adult children living with mom and dad since the turn of the century. So we have that. And also this is something, and this is kind of like my personal life. I've been trying to get some Ruffles sour cream and onion potato chips for two months. They've been out of stock. And I've noticed that there are certain restaurants that should be open in the middle of the day are closed. So right now, as we're moving toward this real economy, businesses that pay low wages are having a nightmare of a time of hiring staff right now. Now, why can these people afford to not work? What did I just tell you? They're living with mom and dad. They're living with someone. They have someone that is subsidizing their lifestyle, that is subsidizing the way that they work. It's a big, big issue. It's a really big issue. And as we move into um, 2023, I, I see this setting the stage for a recession. Uh, February is almost over. So sometime next week, I will have the jobs number, the number of people who filed for unemployment, the number of new jobs who created should have that next week. And we will see. And I have a feeling that these numbers are going to be down. Now, this is what's wild in this ghost in the machine economy. Right now, if you want to work, you can work. But let's kind of go back and explore what happened during the pandemic. And some people want to uh, push back on this. We had situations where people who were not working, who were making more money because of the $600 bonus per week that the government had locked on into unemployment due to the CARES Act. You had people who were sitting at home, smoking weed, playing video games, having sex at home for months, for months, making more money than they ever made when they were working. $600 a week, is $2,400 a month. <clears throat> That's $26,000 a year. 75% of Americans make $35,000 a year or less. This was a huge bonus and it stimulated the economy. These people weren't working. They were smoking weed, playing video games, <laughs> fucking and spending money. They were spending money on Turo. They were spending money on dining out. Uh, there was a restaurant that during the stimulus economy, when I would go to it, I have to get on their wait list. And I would get on their wait list an hour or so before I even went because that's now I don't even have to get on the wait list. I can just let me let me go ahead and check, you know, since we're having this conversation, um, I could just pretty much um, just go there and not have to wait because we are back to the real economy because I, I haven't been there. oh they're closed I think they close at 2 p.m. so I can't do it but they're open a little later uh, during the week. But we're moving back to the real economy with some interesting stipulations. We have a large contingency of people who just don't wanna work. They're looking for purpose. They're looking for meaning. They're looking for something deeper in their lives, right? And once again, 
There is no purpose in your job is to move this box from point A to move your box to point B. There is no greater purpose in that. There is no greater situation in that. There is no larger life meaning purpose in that. And this is why the majority of jobs pay $35,000 a year or less because they don't really take any remarkable brain power. They don't take any um, special skills, special skills. So we, we have a lot of people who, as going back to my video talking about, you don't have an income problem, you have a skill set problem. Uh, one of the things that I consistently see in this economy as we move to the real economy is that people are scratching their heads and they're wondering what's next. I did a video like, if you use all your money to live, there's no way you can protect your income from inflation. All your dollars that you're using to buy gas, to buy food, you're exposing that to inflation. Only if you have money above and beyond what you need to live on to set aside, that's the money that you can protect from inflation. Or you could start a business and get all types of deductions and protect your income from inflation because you're not paying taxes, but that's a whole nother video. That's a whole nother video. That would be over at the corporate game. Because one of the things that I don't think that people are ready for is what's to come. The ghost in the machine economy is over. It's done with. And now we're, we're dealing with the real economy with some funky, funky factors. One of the funkiest factors is home prices. Inflation on home prices has been 20 to 30% depending upon where you buy a house, where the house is located. I don't think that that's gonna go on. I don't think that housing prices are going to dramatically just crash like they did in 2008, 9, and 10. I don't think that's gonna happen. What I feel is gonna happen is as interest rates go up and money goes from being super cheap, you got people out there now with a 30-year fix at 2%. That's cheap money. That's cheap, cheap, cheap money. So we're gonna see the end of cheap money because the Fed's gonna raise interest rates. I know this may be crazy, but I see a seven or 8% interest rate for mortgages in the next two to three years. And people are going to, now, once again, I know for many of you who are too young to realize, mortgage interest rates in the 70s and 80s were 11 to 16%. But the price of a house wasn't that much. Home prices were three to four times average income. So if you made $10,000 a year, your house was only like $40,000. That's not the case. Now, home prices are 10 to 20 times the average person income. And this is not sustainable. You can't just keep going up, keep going up, keep going up, because what's happening is, as the price of houses continue to go up, so many people are priced out of the market that the market cannot be sustainable. Zillow and Open Door found this out the hard way. They bought these houses at these inflated prices and they could not sell them for more than what they bought them for because they had reached that threshold. There's a certain threshold. The average price of a nice house right now is $400,000. That's almost a jumbo loan. That's almost a jumbo loan. And to qualify for 400,000, you're gonna to need to have a very large down payment or you're gonna to have to make a, a larger income. And we're at that point where the average person cannot afford a house in the United States of America. And this is the point that we're about to start putting that bus in reverse. We're gonna to have to back the bus up because we have 
all these houses, well, we don't have a lot of houses. Housing inventory for various reasons is low. Number one, the people who have houses, they realize if they sell their house, then they will be thrown into this mess of looking for a house. They may make significant money on their house, but they're gonna have to use that money to buy another house. So they're not just selling. They're like, ah, I'm gonna wait this out. I'm gonna wait this out. So with the release of the ghost in the machine, which was an apparition, which was a specter, which was not even close to anything that was the real economy, uh, we're getting to a point where Armageddon is gonna happen and we may have World War III. Having the distinct possibility of having World War III is very much, now one of the reasons Putin is doing this is he's making money. Going to war, this is, going to war is one of the reasons that the United States of America came out the Great Depression. So wars can lift a country out of recession because of the wartime spend. So Putin ain't doing this light-handedly. He's doing this and he's making money. Uh, Russia has the world's fifth largest gold reserve. Price of gold is going up. Interestingly enough, and this is what's funny, because you know, you know my stance on crypto. I don't feel that you should buy crypto unless you're very skilled and you have the money to lose. And crypto was supposed to be impervious to real marketplace forces. Bitcoin keeps crashing. Bitcoin keeps having many crashes. And if you look at the history of Bitcoin, it does this. It'll have many crash, many crash, many crash. And it, it will, that's the setup for a big crash. Because, you know, they, they keep talking about support levels and moving day averages and all this other stuff. And every time that Bitcoin has a mini crash, it sets the stage for a larger crash in the future. So I'm expecting to see a big crash for Bitcoin. I mean, a big one, a very big one for Bitcoin because we're moving to marketplace real forces because you know, Bitcoin was supposed to be impervious to war and the ups and downs of the economy. That isn't true. Even Bitcoin is being impacted by real marketplace forces. Now, I have a lot of people who are after me who's like, well, Glendon, if um, all these people don't have jobs and they make money, how are they gonna afford to buy your courses? Let's kind of step back a few bits. In 2009, when I started on YouTube selling my first digital product, what was going on? We were in a recession. We were not in just a normal recession. We were in the great recession. In year one, I made 62,000. In year two, I made 92,000. In year three, I made 1.5 million. In a recession, in a recession. So I'm not worried about the landscape because I've been here before and number the, and one of the things that I am well positioned is I don't have a lot of debt I don't have a lot of debt and one of the things that uh, I did is I bought some stuff and I, it reported and this is what's really interesting it reported I had like thirty thousand dollars report on my credit report and my credit score went down by like, quite a bit like 50 points and I was just sitting there like, if I was to use like 100,000 of my credit based upon what just happened, because I only used 30 and I already paid it off and I just got to wait until next month for it to report so my score goes back up. But if I was to use $100,000 of my credit, my credit score would be in the 600s based upon what just happened with just 30. So one of the things that's going to happen and it hasn't happened yet we don't have a credit crunch banks are still giving out credit cards banks are still giving out mortgages banks are still giving out car loans and banks are still giving out loans like it's candy i would anticipate as interest rates go up and as we move deeper into the real economy we're going to run into a credit crunch i would say 2023 2024 banks are going to get spooked banks are going to stop giving out credit 
banks are going to start cramming down credit lines because once again just looking at how where we're moving looking at where we are as we depart the ghost in the machine and move back to the real economy and also i've been keeping my eye on the crime rate crime has gone up that's a big signal crime has gone up crime is going up murder has gone up suicide has gone up um, petty crimes have exploded serious crimes have exploded domestic abuse has gone up because people are stressed weed sales have gone up cocaine use has gone up so this is par for the course that we have people who are stressed out and I want the next time you know if you're living somewhere like Atlanta maybe Dallas or Houston the next time you're on the highway look at the underpass and see the number of people who are living in tents the number of people who are living in tents in Atlanta has exploded in the last three years it has exploded we have so many people and these folks are the epitome of the global reset they have been reset they have been tragically reset and here's the thing and I'm gonna tell you from experience once you fall or go homeless it is an incredibly difficult journey to climb your way back to normalcy it's hard because first of all there's the psychological aspect you went from living in a house or an apartment to living in a tent you went to taking a dump behind a tree so there's a lot of psychological things that happen when one gets globally reset and that's a big big mental journey that these people have to make so what we're going to see is mental illness is going to explode because there were people who were borderline sick they were borderline and this global reset is going to push them over and this is one of the reasons that suicide has dramatically increased. People are taking their own lives because they're stressed. So we're going to see if I'm right, and hopefully I'm wrong. I make these videos and I gather the data and I bring it to you and I interpret it. And I hope that I'm wrong, but what I see is a lot of economic pain. And then this thing where all of the folks left California, they left New York, they left San Francisco because they don't have to go to an office and they can work remote. They have literally dramatically pushed out residents of all of these beautiful little towns because they don't have to go to an office. And they have made it where the people who work in restaurants cannot afford Forward to live in that town because all of these new residents have moved to these little towns and they've made the rents explode. You don't have to live in New York City to have a six or even seven figure job now. You don't have to live in LA. You don't have to live in San Francisco. And these people have spread out all across the United States to all of these little towns and they have literally killed the local housing and rental markets because these little towns don't have big industry. So these people don't have that kind of money and it's bad. It is bad. It's, it's bad. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And um, like I said, I don't want to see anyone hurt. I don't want to see anyone um, seriously harmed by this. I take no joy in that. However, I am waiting on the collapse. I am waiting on the collapse with bated breath because everything goes on sale. And a lot of rich folks are waiting on the collapse because they're going to be able to get way more for their dollars. So there's a number of folks who are literally just like, come on, any day now, any day now, 
so I can start buying up these assets cheap. And that's the game. Because, like I said, 75% of America cannot afford to play the game because they don't have no money. And hopefully people are aware because uh, I've noticed that certain YouTubers have changed their stick. Um, I'm not mentioning any names, but now he's on this whole, I'm selling everything, sell everything. Don't be a, um, beholden to possessions. And it's a radical departure from his content two, three years ago. It is a complete about face, which tells me that this YouTuber is feeling economic pain in his personal life because he is now for the people. You know, uh, I made a video because he put a video talking about why he financed cars and I put a video talking about why that was BS. Shout out to the credit plug who also agrees with me because here's the thing. You're going to, we're going to enter a phase. Like we had the, the stock market has been like a bull stock market for like the last 11 years. If you look historically at stock markets, the stock market can have a year where it can return two or 3%. As we leave the ghost in the machine economy, or I should say we left it, that bus has left. We're going to see that again. And all these folks who are like, just invest. I just, I saw a video the day, guy started a business. In the business, he was able to go from 20 bucks an hour to 100K, and he's on that investment tip. He's on that investment tip. And I was just sitting here like, okay. All right, I was just looking at it, because he's talking, you know, so much investing. And this is what's funny. The narrative, the messaging about investing is so strong that this person witnessed starting his own business and making dramatically more money than he did from his other jobs, yet he's still on this investment tip because he's being told that investing is the way to go. And he did a video and he was talking about, you know, he looked at the numbers and based upon his low income, he couldn't get where he wanted to go for about 30, 40 years. So he wants to make more money so he can invest money so he can get to a point where he can kick back and chill when he's still relatively young. This is what's gonna happen. He's gonna put all this money in the stock markets and the stock market's gonna go down. And the, and the stock market ain't gonna go down for just a year. It's gonna be a pro, this is coming. If you look at history, this is coming. So the stock market is gonna be at multiple years where it's gonna have a low return and he ain't getting nowhere rich anytime soon from the stock market. But if he had doubled down on his business and let's have this conversation. If he had set up his business where he can hire people to run the business where he didn't have to run the business, that would get him to where he wants to be much quicker than the stock market. Like, he could do that in less than 10 years. He could do that, maybe depending upon his business, he could do that in five years. So I'm just sitting here and I'm looking and I'm seeing the messaging and I see that people are stuck on this whole notion of investing because it's the narrative. Like people were talking about, you can buy three rentals. Let me tell you a little story. I know someone that has four rentals and all four rentals have a mortgage. And after paying the mortgage, and this is now, this is now, after paying the mortgage, his house's only cash flow, 1200 bucks a month. And this is four houses. This is right now. And he's raised his rent. Because before the great uh, housing inflation price, he was only cash flowing like $100, $150 per house. So this new raised rents have helped him dramatically, but he has four houses with four mortgages and he's only making 1200 bucks a month. That's only $14,000 a year. And he's invested in real estate. And he was just, and he, we were having a conversation and he's like, at this rate, I would need to have a hundred houses. 
And I was like, yeah, you would need to have scale to make the kind of money you want to make. And he's starting to realize that real estate isn't what he was told because he says, I am nowhere near able to quit my job. Now I said, if you had these houses paid off and you were able to take that whole 5,000 that you're giving the mortgage companies, and that would give you 6,200 per month. You can live off that. He said, yeah, but who has the money to pay cash for a house? I said, more people than you know. More people than you know. So you're going to see a lot of these people who are investors crumble. They're going to crumble. They're going to have big issues and they're going to run into the reality because as the economy continues to deteriorate, it's already touched Bitcoin, it's touched the stock market, it's touched oil, it's touched gas, it's touched milk, it's touched my sour cream and onion ruffles chips. Uh, another butter cookies. Can't find them. And one of the reasons, now I'm just sitting here like, what goes into creating another butter cookies where they are not being stocked? And there was this one place, had the best donuts, had the best chocolate ice donuts. They stopped making them. So what we're going to run into is a supply chain issue as well as a recession. There will be things that you want that you will not be able to get. Because when you go back and you look at the origination point of how stuff is made, how stuff is put together, how stuff is developed, you get to the point, like one of the reasons that cars, I was watching a video and cars don't have heated seats because they can't get the chips to program the heated seat feature in the car. They can put it in after the fact but they don't have the chips. So at some point in the supply chain, there's something amiss where they're running into problems making another butter cookies. There's something amiss that they're running into a problem making sour cream and onion ruffles chips. I can still get the legs, but I can't get the ruffles with the ridges, which I so love. And you will see more and more things that you like and want and just, you just can't get them. As we go into 2023, you just will not be able to get these parts. You won't be able to get these things. And I feel that we have left the ghost in the machine. I feel that we're at a point where real fundamental marketplaces have entered the room. And these, these marketplaces have sat down, lit up a cigar, and they're chilling. And these marketplaces are going to be quite dramatic across the economic landscape in terms of housing. Like I feel 2023, we're going to see housing correction, not so much a crash, but we're going to see a correction. I don't think we're going to see what we saw in 2008, 9, 10. We're not going to see that, but we are going to see a correction because the price of houses has outpaced the average person's income. The average person can't buy a house right now. There ain't nothing they can do. Unless granddad or grandma or long uh, uncle Lester, they didn't know left them a bag, left them 100, 150, 200K. They can't do it. And that's a problem. That is a huge problem. That is an issue. That is a situation that is problematic on so many levels it's not funny so once again one of the things that you want to do because we're getting in, we're getting ready to get into the home economics part and let me tell you how i want to do this training uh, there are things that i do like recently i've sold a drone i shipped a drone out today fedex i sold some cameras i sold about eight thousand dollars for for stuff and I spent 12,000 on new equipment. This camera's new, this camera's new. So I actually defrayed the cost. And this is what's so cool. Even though I sold those products, 
I still get to take the deduction for buying this. I get to still take the full deduction. I, I still get to take the full deduction. I still get to take the full deduction for buying this new equipment because I have receipts. And I bought it in my business name. I still get to, even though I have sold all this stuff, and th this is one of the games that you can play. This is one of the games you can play, especially if you are becoming a YouTuber or a content creator, like right here. This is $3,000 worth of tax of deductions. This case is like 300 bucks. And I'm gonna tell you why I bought this case. This case is great. Because you can ship it, you can fly with it, and nothing happens to your drone. This is a new case. Because um, I got this case because I have this drone is brand new it's only been in the air a few times and i'm guess what i'm gonna do since this is for business i am buying another drone i'm gonna have two new drones and guess what they're gonna be tax deductions because i have the receipts and i bought them for my youtube business so I'm gonna have two brand new drones and I'm gonna tell you why I do that. Um, I have one computer for processing videos and I have a backup laptop, which is in the bedroom. Um, if I needed to, I could process my videos on that laptop. So everything, I have a redundancy built-in system. Like I got two cameras, if one camera happens, guess what? I keep making videos. Because I, I don't, like, the people who are in business and don't have backup systems for their business puzzle me. Like, that's how you make money. Why would you not have a backup? Why would you not have an extra? Why would you not have something that if something happens to your main thing, then boom, we can slide to the second thing and we can keep trucking. This is, let me tell you the story how I ended up with the Porsche. For the longest time, I only had one car. And uh, my car was too lord and I put an exhaust on it. And it provided me with a unique driving experience. And then I had to have my car go to the shop and I had to rent a car. And I actually hated renting cars. Like, you will never catch me in a Toyota or a Camry or something, no. I don't like the way those cars drive. There are nothing wrong with these cars. Just for me, I don't like the driving experience. So I end up going out and buying an MX5, an X5M. So I had a car that was very comparable to my main driving car. And then as I got more money and I wanted to treat myself, I upgraded the X5 and I upgraded the Audi. I went from an Audi S4 to a Porsche 911. And then I went to a Porsche 911 S. And guess what? I'm probably gonna to go to a Porsche 911 Turbo S. And that's probably where it will stop. But I always have redundancy systems built in. And this is, this is gonna be um, interesting because um, for the first time in a long time, I'm only dated one woman. Like, it's been almost two decades. And fortunately for me, she's a good one because this is one of the reasons that I dated two or three women. Redundancy. If my main chick had a situation and had to go out of town, number two would slide in. If number one and number two had an issue, then number three would slide in. And I, I've had to get away from that and it's been interesting because uh, like i said she actually lives not too far from me so um she shows up quite regularly and we haven't had these issues but once again for business for business for business for business if you don't have redundancy systems built in you're you're playing with fire I remember this one girl who made her money online and then her laptop crashed and she couldn't make money for two weeks until she got a new laptop. 
ain't gonna be me. Like I said, I got this camera, I got another camera, and the party goes on regardless of what happens. And also, honestly, I shoot with both of these cameras. Like this camera has the 1.4 uh, aperture, which makes those guys a little blurry in the back. The Canon has the 1.2, which makes everything behind me extremely blurry. So, you know, I, I had to play around with the Canon because the Canon, I have to, like, this camera is like maybe three feet in front of me. The Canon, I have to put back about six, seven, eight feet to fill me in the frame because if it's like right up on me, I'm all up, I'm all up in the screen. I'm all up in the screen. And one of the things that uh, I'm getting ready to do is to get more into the production. In this month, I'm going to bring Savage Finance back. So we're gonna be having a whole bunch of YouTube channels in my YouTube business. Because uh, there, there's so many things that we're gonna do here, but yeah, the real economy is back with a, the revenge of the real economy. And people are not ready. They're not ready. They're not ready at all. And it's showing. And what we're going to see is some massive carnage. We're going to see some massive pain. And we're going to see a lot of people get globally reset. It's coming. It's coming. All right. So. Um, I might actually start doing live streams on this channel and then once again if I do live streams they will not be random they will be part of a program they will be part of something that I'm gonna do I'm just not gonna start doing live streams and just talking I'm not doing that so be on the lookout if that happens or the live streams may happen at Hustlers Kung Fu or which I'm really thinking about changing the name of that channel to the House of Pain really really thinking about changing that to the house of pain um thinking about it really really thinking about it so that's all i got for you guys i will talk to you in the next one